Okay, let's continue our discussion on renormalization group equations. So far, we have looked at the equations that govern the the evolution of coupling constant as you change the scale mu. Okay, where mu is the renormalization scale, and also uh, so here. Okay, and that is govern, uh, governed by the beta function. And note that beta function is a universal function, meaning once you have specified the theory, beta function is fixed. It doesn't uh, depend on what you are studying, which scattering process you are studying. Okay, that's uh, independent of those um, um, objects, those observables. It's specified once you specify a theory. And then we also looked at this gamma m, which controls the evolution of uh, the mass parameter. Okay, somewhere here I had it in. Mm. Yeah, here. So, gamma m is this object, which is just the derivative of mr and some uh, mu and mr factors here. And again, uh, just like uh, beta function, this is also a universal function, meaning it is fixed once, once you fix the theory. Okay, it doesn't depend on what observables you are looking at. So we had looked at these two um, group equations called renormalization group equations. Now let's continue further on that and uh, let's write down the renormalization group equations for S matrix elements. Okay. Okay, and uh, you may recall that we have already seen that S matrix element, whether you write it in terms of bare, um, bare quantities or in terms of renormalized quantities, it remains the same. So here, I'm just writing that observation that we had made earlier. Okay, I'll show you in a minute where we had done that. First, I write it down. Okay, I'm just making these dependencies on uh, parameters also explicit. Okay, remember we should fix the bare parameters fixed. Uh, we should keep the bare parameters fixed so that the theory doesn't change. Okay, let me show you where we have seen this earlier. Hopefully it can go, no. Okay, I think it was in another file. So, um, anyhow, you can go back and see that we had shown that if you if you write the S matrix elements in uh, using the bare parameters or renormalized parameters and renormalized fields, okay, they have the same expressions. Okay, um, now I'm going to utilize that. So, the left hand side, because this is independent of mu, there is no mu here because everything is in terms of bare parameters, mu d over d mu of s is 0. Okay, I'll, instead of writing k1 to kn, I will just write k subscript i, okay, this is 0 which means that mu d over d mu of the same object written in terms of the, the renormalized uh, quantities 
is also zero. Okay, and you can turn this total derivative into partial derivatives uh, as we did earlier. So you have mu del over del mu. Okay, this is when you are changing the mu, only mu. And then other things should change appropriately so that this relation is satisfied. Okay, so I should change, uh, things should change appropriately with, with change of the, I mean the, the lambda r and mr should change appropriately so that this holds true. Okay, so this is a renormalization group equation that you get for asymmetric elements or any other physical observables. It will be this thing. Okay, now um, I want to write down the renormalization group equation for Green's functions. Okay, they will be slightly or gently more complicated. So now I want to write renormalization group equation for Green's functions. Okay. So, again, let's start with the bare Green's function. Okay. Um, let me also make the M and lambda explicit. So this is zero. If you take the uh, derivative with respect to mu, because this object doesn't depend on mu at all, okay, because this is in terms of bare objects, that derivative is zero. Okay. Now, um, recall that z uh, phi of x, we had defined uh, we had defined phi r renormalized field as z half phi, okay? So for each field, we had introduced this factor z half, z phi half, okay, which was giving you, which was, um, yeah, which was used in renormalizing the, the Green's functions. I mean, this is one of the things. You also had to bring in zm and z lambda. Anyhow, as far as phi is concerned, this is the renormalization constant that you have. So now I can take this equation, which is in, written in terms of the bare couplings and bare um, parameter uh, and masses, and turn it to, into an equation involving renormalized Green's function. Okay, so this is uh, Green's function with N arguments, which means you are really looking at, um, th th this is a correlator involving N fields, okay, N, uh, N phi's. So you have for each phi, you write a Z to the half, which brings Z N to the half, uh, Z to the N half, and then you have G N renormalized X N then m r, lambda r, and now it depends on mu as well, okay? But here when I do all this, the Green's function should be evaluated at fixed lambda and m, okay? So that I do not change the theory as I change mu. Okay, so now let's act with the derivative. So it is, um, It is mu d over d mu, okay, and then it acts on z and half phi.
and then you have GnR. I will suppress these arguments now. Plus Z phi to the n half mu d over d mu GnR. Okay, keeping lambda and m fixed. Okay, good. Now um, let me define. or maybe even before that, let me um, write one more step. So this derivative let's take. So this will give you um, mu d over d mu z phi and half that is equal to n over 2 z phi n over 2 okay. 1 over z phi d over d mu z of phi. Okay. Taking this derivative will give you n over 2 and then z to the phi n over 2 minus 1. So that minus 1 is here and the remaining z n over 2 is here. Okay. So that's the derivative. Now I define um, gamma phi as z to the phi power minus half mu d over d mu z phi to the half okay which you can check it's same as half 1 over z phi without a square root this time mu d over d mu z phi okay so that's definition of gamma phi let me box it Okay, now it's already here. Okay, it didn't work. So that's um, gamma phi. Now I will substitute this in here. Okay, in this expression. So mu d over d mu z and and uh, z phi to the n half I will substitute from here okay and then I will use the definition of gamma phi and put in this equation so I will get then um, let me how should I do that okay anyway you can you can remember I'm not so good at doing this. So I'll just write it down what you will get. So uh, you substitute the definition of gamma, gamma phi, and you will get the following. So the renormalization group equation will become it will become and what happened? It will become n gamma phi z phi n over 2 ren um, gn renormalized, okay, plus z phi n half. Okay, and then let's go back. What I'm going to do is take this total derivative and write what we had here. Okay, exactly this thing. Okay. So then you get mu d over del over del mu plus beta tilde del over del lambda r minus gamma m m r del over del m r. Okay, you can check that this is what you will get. And as before, you should keep um, lambda and m fixed. Okay, the, uh, the bare ones. So what do we get? We I'm just going to rearrange this slightly and you get the following. Mu del over del mu plus beta tilde delta over 
delta lambda r minus gamma m m r delta over delta m r plus n gamma phi. Okay, I have just clubbed um, everything together here. Okay, and this you have a z th this is overall factor now z phi and half okay that's an overall factor okay so that's the renormalization group equation for the greens function Now, if you take a Fourier transform of G n, so G n depends on x1, x2 up to x n, and if you do a Fourier transform of each of these x's, you will get G tilde, G tilde n r, okay, and it will also satisfy the same equation because none of these derivatives care about those Fourier transform variables, okay, they do not uh, get entangled with this. So, um, taking Fourier transform. with respect to all these coordinates, okay, it will not change this equation, so we will get also the following. Because I have put a tilde now, and I'm I'm using k tilde, k n, and lambda renormalized, mass renormalized, and of course mu, and that is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the renormalization group equation for the Green's function. Okay, excellent. Now we want to solve the renormalization group equations. Okay, and we are going to see some some nice nice results, which will tell us about the behavior of Green's functions at high energies. So let's look at how to find the solutions. So. So solution of renormalization group equation. So the equation that I have uh, uh, written in box, let me write it down again. Just a second. No, I will. I will take it later. So let's do some uh, dimensional analysis first. Okay. So I'm not doing for some time. I will not be doing any quantum field theory. I'm just doing simple dimensional analysis. Okay. There is no renormalization. Nothing involved in what I'm going to do now. So I will do pure dimensional analysis. Okay, so uh, g tilde n, okay, this is just the Fourier transform of our um, correlation function or the Green's function. Okay, so when you do a Fourier transform, each of these phi's become phi tilde. Okay, so g tilde n will have the dimensions of n times phi tilde. Okay, so we need to know the uh, dimension of phi tilde. Okay, and then 
dimension of G, mass dimension of g tilde n is n times the mass dimension of phi tilde. You can put renormalized here. Okay, whether you have phi tilde or phi, they both have, uh, whether you have uh, phi or z, uh, phi renormalized or phi bare, they both have the same same mass dimensions because z is dimensionless. Okay. Similarly, for phi tilde renormalized or phi tilde bare, they will have the same mass dimensions. So this is n times phi tilde r. Okay. So um, now I will be a little bit. Um, I, I will I will call this object as omega. Okay. And later I will put this n times um, phi tilde r. Or in fact, I will first write this as n d of phi tilde. Okay, so this phi tilde r, the dimension of this, I am denoting by d phi tilde. Okay, and this is what I am going to write as shortly as omega. Okay, that is the definition of omega. So let's look at this on dimensional grounds. G tilde n r with all these arguments okay this is equal to the following um you take you write f of r and um, once I have written this, it will be clear what f of r is. See what I am saying is, if you take g tilde, okay, g tilde is some uh, is a sum of certain terms okay and each of these terms is made out of k1 k2 kn mr lambda r mu okay these are the things which enter into it and this has to be a, a, a each of the terms has to have the same mass dimension okay otherwise it doesn't make sense to add objects which do not have same mass dimension so g tilde of n is some function constructed out of these quantities k1 m uh, sorry k i's m's m r lambda r mu now if you take that quantity if you take that expression whatever that expression of g tilde is and divide each of these objects k i see k is momentum okay so it has mass dimension one so divide it by mu so divide each of the k's by mu Divide MR by mu. MR has mass dimension 1. So divide MR by mu. That makes it dimensionless. Similarly, dividing KI's by mu makes that dimensionless. So KI over mu is dimensionless. Leave lambda R untouched because lambda R is anyway dimensionless. And of course, mu divided by mu is 1. So take that Green's function. Wherever you have KI's, divide it by mu. Wherever you have MR divided by mu, wherever you have mu divided by mu okay that thing you get is this object fn r of these uh, ratios okay and clearly you see there is no other mu written here because mu over mu is one okay so fn r is completely dimensionless right because that you have constructed out of objects that are dimensionless okay so there is no way f and r can be dimension full. So left hand side is dimension full and it has dimension mass dimension omega, right? Because that's the Green's function okay, that has dimension omega or n times d phi tilde. So that entire mass dimension has to be taken by this factor mu to the omega. Maybe I'll give you one example and it will be clear what I'm saying is something 
um, trivial. So think of a trivial example. Okay. Think of some function. Okay. So instead of Green's function, I'm looking at just some function so that I can repeat the same argument in a simple setting. So suppose some function phi, uh, phi which is a function of all these variables k i s m lambda mu. Okay, I'm not writing r; it doesn't matter. And suppose this function is the following: k to the four. Let's say k one to the four. Um, k one square, k two square, plus mu square, k one dot k two. Plus m square mu square plus lambda k two to the four. Okay, some expression I have constructed. All I have taken care of in writing this expression is that each dimension has mass dimension. Sorry, each term has mass dimension four. So that's four. This is four. This is two, and this is two. So four. That is four. Lambda is dimensionless in this example. So there is mass dimension four coming from here. Okay. Now I will write this as. So I'll do what I was saying earlier. I will divide each of the dimensionful um, quantities in this, which is which are k i m n mu, not the lambda, by uh, divide them by mu. Okay. So let's write as this as following. K one over mu or four. So I have a mu over four plus this one, k one over mu square, k two over mu square. Okay, I have divided by mu to the four, so I should have mu to the four. Plus this one, um, divide mu square by mu square. I mean it's trivial. Um, let's divide this one. So k one over mu, k two over mu. If you wish, you can divide this also by mu square, but you have to again multiply mu square, so you get mu to the four. Okay, let's check mu to the four divided by mu square, so you get mu square k one dot k two, same as this. Plus again divide m square by mu square. Lambda, you don't do anything; it's dimensionless, so we don't want to touch it. Okay, so you see this. I can rewrite as the following, and each factor, each term, not the factor, each term has a mu to the four. Okay, and that has come out purely because of dimensional, uh, because we are making everything else dimensionless, right? All the all the other um, quantities, k ones, mu et etc., uh, et they have been uh, divided by mu, so they become dimensionless, and that is why. This is what you get. Okay, so k one over mu dot k two over mu. Okay, the thing in the square brackets is completely dimensionless. And the entire mass dimension of phi, which is dimension four, because because each term is of mass dimension four, is carried by the factor mu to the four. Okay, and that is exactly what will happen here for the Green's function. Okay, so I will be able to write it as this object, which is completely dimensionless. And the entire mass dimension will be carried by mu to the omega. Okay, so that is good. Now, um, okay, should go to the another page. Okay, let me try if I can do it.
No, come on, see. Okay, good. It's here. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to do is, I want to scale each of the um, dimensionful uh, dimension um, object here, like K1, K2, all this, by scale S. Okay, so I will scale each of these uh, objects in the argument. So I will. Um, ki i will make s times ki okay, ki where s is some some number like 10 100 1000 100000 whatever okay and mrs also i will scale lambda r i will not scale because it is dimensionless okay and mu of course i will scale so i'm just scaling everything So, what do I get then? So, I get g tilde n r s k 1 s k n s m r lambda r s mu. So, I have not touched here. This will be what? This will be s to the omega mu to the omega times f n r okay let me let me write the remaining things also okay is this clear why it should be like this see this function f n r this is made up of dimensionless objects, okay, dimensionless ratios. So when I scale ki to ski and mu to s mu, k1 over mu doesn't change, right? Because k1 becomes k1 is scaled to sk1 and mu is scaled to s mu. So the s cancels here. Similarly, s cancels in all of these. Also in mr and mu because mr becomes s times mr and mu becomes s times mu. So that ratio doesn't change and lambda r is anyway dimensionless so nothing happens to that okay, because we are not changing that. So when you change the scale, uh, change the scale of these all these um, dimensionful objects, what you get is again, so this mu to the omega f n r that is g tilde, right? So I will just write for this object, for this product g tilde n r k1 up to kn and mr lambda r mu okay so this is how it behaves this function behaves under scaling all the dimensionful um, uh, parameters and momenta Okay, and then the overall overall factor is just s to the, s to the w. Okay, so this thing times s to the w. Okay, very good. So now uh, just remind you, I have not done any renormalization group equations. Okay, I am just doing dimensional analysis. Okay, I am just counting dimensions and looking at how how these functions uh, behave when you change the scale, okay? And, and whatever is written here is only on dimensional grounds. There is no, no renormalization, no field theory entering into this, okay? Whatever I have said could be, would have been said in some other course where you are not doing quantum field theory. Okay, so now let's do um, one thing we should uh, we, let's differentiate this with respect to S. Okay, so differentiate this result with respect to S. Okay. 
So I will get a differential form of this. So S d over ds of g tilde n r s k i k instead of writing n times I'll just write s k i m r lambda r mu is equal to um, omega s to the omega so I'm differentiating this but then you have another s multiplying so it omega s omega minus 1 but then it because you have s multiplying it gives you again s omega g tilde n r something went wrong no everything is fine Yeah, I wanted to write one more step before differentiating. So let me do that. Okay. So this is this. From here I can also write S of Ki m r lambda r mu so what i'm doing is this is here okay this i'm calling m r prime this i'm calling mu prime okay so for a moment you read it as m r prime mu prime okay so mentally you read it as m r prime uh, mu prime and this is s to the w g tilde n r k i's then if this is m r prime then this is m r prime divided by s right there is a factor of s between the two so now i'm instead of calling that m r prime i'm calling it m r so this will be m r over s okay then lambda r nothing happens to that and this is mu prime okay so this is mu prime over s and i'm calling mu prime s mu again okay so that's um, the relation so you have a green green's function here um, which is having momenta which are all scaled up by factor of s but the masses are masses and other parameters are still fixed okay and they are related to the Green's function uh, with these momenta unchanged, unscaled momenta by this relation where you see that the mass parameter and the uh, um, renormalization scale, they are scaled down by a factor of s. Okay, okay so now let's um, differentiate this with respect to s and still remembering we are still doing um, purely dimensional analysis. So I'll differentiate this with respect to S. Come on, C. Let's hope it works. Yes. Okay. Now let's differentiate this. So what does that give? That gives S D over DS. Okay, so I'm differentiating with respect to S and then multiplying S also. G tilde N R S K I M R lambda R mu. This is equal to this is equal to omega s omega I have already explained why you'll get this thing g tilde n r k 
के आई एम आर ओवर एस लेमडा आर म्यू ओवर एस ओके ओके लेट मी राइट डाउन द आंसर एंड देन आई विल एक्सप्लेन प्लस एस टू द ओमेगा माइनस एम आर डेल ओवर डेल एम आर जी टिल द एन आर के आई एम आर ओवर एस लेमडा आर मी ओवर एस and then you'll have one more term which is s to the w minus mu del over del mu okay, acting on I should yeah here also i could have written like this to be symmetric so g tilde n r and again the same thing Let's see if it is all correct. Yes, omega. Okay. I will tell you in a moment, but let me um, just club everything together. So this is omega, and you remember what omega was? Omega was the dimension of G R. Okay. Which is n times dimension of phi tilde. So omega minus m r delta over delta m r del over del m r minus mu del over del mu acting on g tilde n r s k i um s k i m r lambda r mu let me tell you why so here g tilde n with this scaled up k but all these other parameters uh without scaling is related to this one by s omega uh, i mean related to this factor related to this g tilde with uh, uh, with this overall factor multiplying so here you see you have s omega multiplying exactly this quantity in here also s omega s to the omega multiplying exactly this quantity and similarly here so you get this factor in each of the term and that is what i have collected into the left hand side of this okay so that's why you have gn ski mr lambda r and mu and not mr over s and mu over s okay it's just i have used this relation here again okay so this is what we get um let me again rewrite this with bringing all the all the terms on the same side and i will also write the the renormalization group equation which we have uh, written down earlier so i'll put them all side by side so that we can work with them later so here uh, okay let me write here and then copy paste so you get s d over ds plus mr del over del mr plus mu del over del mu minus omega acting on g tilde r g tilde n s k i mr lambda r mu equal to zero okay so what is this equation telling you is how this uh, green's function uh, evolve when you scale up the 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 external momenta okay and leave everything else unchanged okay the, that that is the i mean leaving everything else unchanged meaning keeping the um yeah bare quantities are always fixed right because we are not changing the theory so that's the that's the equation we have got completely based on dimensional analysis
Okay, before proceeding further, let me just tell you how I, how you get all these terms. So what we have done here is we have, um, when you are differentiating with respect to S, okay, this part was simple, but when you are differentiating with respect to S, you can trade off that differentiation with respect to S to a differentiation with respect to MR, right? Because this always comes in this product, MR over S. So when you are differentiating with respect to S, uh, you can change that differentiation with, with respect to S in terms of a differentiation with respect to MR. And similarly here, instead of differentiating with respect to S, you can turn the differentiation into a differentiation with respect to mu. And um, this should be something familiar. I can just um, show you here. So if you have some function f, which is, let's look at this part, okay? And we want to differentiate with respect to s, okay? So this is del f z over del z into del z over del s. What is z? z is m over s, m, m over mu. Okay, I should have used s, let's write it as okay, m over s. m over s, this is, this is s. Okay, so now you can write del over del m, f m over s as del f over del z into del z over del m. Okay, so derivative with respect to s, let's write down that thing. So del over del s, f m over s is this object, del f over del z into del z over del s. Okay, this is the same equation I've written, which is, I can write this del f over del z as, I will just take this thing and multiply with the inverse. Okay, multiply with the inverse of del z over del m on both sides. That gives you del f over del z, and I will just substitute it here. So you get del over del m of f or m over s times del z over del m inverse times del z over del s, okay? And you can see that del z over del m is one over s and del z over del s is minus m over s square, okay? So here you get this, this product becomes minus m over s. So you get del f over del s of f in uh, when you change that um, in terms of this derivative with respect to m you get minus m over s del over del m f or f of m over s. Okay, That is what I have used. So you see, taking derivative with respect to s, when you have mr over s, will give you minus mr over s times this derivative with respect to m. So here you see, minus mr over s, you'll get <coughs> and a derivative with respect to mr, but that mr over s, you have to also multiply this s, this explicit s, and which just kills that one. And similarly for this, Okay, you turn the derivative with respect to s into a derivative with respect to mu. So that is how I have written down this, these three, these two terms. Okay, so that was our dimensional analysis. I will just copy this equation and um, because we are going to use it again. Come on, C. Okay, so I'll also bring the other equation which we had gotten from 
um, renormalization group. Where is that? Here. Okay, so this is equal to zero from RG. Okay, and this is from dimension analysis. Okay, I just want to clean up a bit. Okay, good. So we have these two equations now, and each of which has a mu del over del mu. Okay, so we can now um, eliminate this derivative with respect to mu, and let's see what we get. So we get um, S D over D S minus I'm taking okay let me just write beta tilde del over del lambda R plus one plus gamma M M R del over del M R minus N d phi tilde okay instead of omega i am writing n d phi tilde okay because that is what omega was plus gamma phi Okay, this is what you get when you eliminate eliminate mu. Okay, we'll work with this equation in the next video, but here you can note that this is the dimension of phi tilde, okay, and you are getting this gamma phi together with it. Okay, and similarly, here one is the, I mean this is just m r right? If if gamma and gamma m was not present. Then it would have been just MR. Now you have that shifted to MR gamma M. Okay, so these are what are called uh, uh, anomalous um, quantities. So this gamma phi is called anomalous mass dimension, uh, anomalous dimension. Okay. This gamma phi would be um, zero if you do not have any renorm uh, if you don't have to renormalize, right? Because remember, this gamma phi is coming from the derivatives of z. Somewhere here, I should have it. Here. Okay. So if z phi is one, if you don't have to renormalize, there are no infinities. Z phi is one. Okay. Then this derivative will give you zero, okay, and gamma phi is just zero. Okay, and similarly for the um, gamma m, it will also be zero. So you see, in the absence of renormalization, 
in this equation you will not have gamma n and gamma phi okay and that is why they are given this name anomalous uh, dimension so gamma phi we call it as anomalous dimension okay so our goal will be to solve this equation because when you solve it okay that's a, a differential equation you solve it and you can write then g tilde n as function of ski with all these uh, things here in terms of uh, g tilde n of ki okay so you will use a boundary condition and put let's say you choose boundary condition to be s equal to 1 Uh, sorry, boundary boundary to be s equal to one. So you you will be able to relate Green's function with scaled up momenta to a Green's function without scaling of the momenta. Okay, and that is what we will do next. So we'll see in the next video.